The thing you got to remember about what the word 3HO means is healthy, happy, holy. Right? So it's, it's not called Sikh Dharma. 3HO is an organization which tries to promote a way of living which is healthy, happy and holy. And if you look at somebody who's doing yoga, who's chanting, who's trying to stay away from drugs and alcohol and other things that are polluting their body, they're doing fitness, um, they're, they're meditating, they, and they're going to get the bliss of meditation. If they, if they work hard, when you experience uh, the, the chant, the, the anand, anand meaning bliss of, of the connection to God, you're, all, you're going to know this is the best thing ever. It's better than drugs and better than anything else out there. So you're going to be healthy, you're going to be happy, and you're walking a, a path of the holy people. All the holy people in the history of mankind have always walked this path of trying to be good and trying to be uh, spiritual. So you're on the path. So, it's, so you've got to remember, Yogiji didn't say, this is Sikhi. He said, this is Kundalini Yoga. Yeah. So we can't fault him for it. it? From, from the angle of the Sikh philosophy, what would the Guru say about Kundalini Yoga? Firstly, they don't really criticize it in the sense that they say it's pointless. Because if you follow a philosophy, it doesn't mean you are that philosophy. And f what I mean by that is, let's say you met a hundred Hindus, you couldn't say they all believe in this, because they might not. One Hindu might believe in one God, another might believe in three, another might believe in a hundred. So in the same sense, you can't say everybody in Kundalini Yoga has one view. Nor can you say that the Guru is going to criticize every single person who's doing one thing. So there's certain practices that Guru criticize, but they don't criticize people. Because you can't judge each person, because each person is an individual. They're within it, that organization, or they're doing that thing. But that doesn't mean they have the same belief. Yeah? Which is why, like, you know, the kind of, you've got arguments within the Sikh community, like Taksali versus AKJ. But somebody who's Daksali might not have the same view as another Daksali. Somebody's AKJ might not have the same view as another AKJ. But they're arguing on philosophy. But actually you've got people. And Gurus look interested in people. So in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, the highest form of yog, yog means union, um, union with God, is described as that the highest yog is through kirtan, to praising God, praising God, singing God's praises, yeah? is given the status of being the highest form of yoga. But if you take somebody off the street who's never done anything meditation before, you take somebody who's never done any kind of healthy living, they've been told it's okay to drink, it's okay to smoke, it's just normal, it's fine. You're trying to get them to start praising, singing God's name. It's going to be far, far away from them. So it's kind of like a, 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 you know, yoga, it's quite a good introduction to the spiritual life. Because within yoga, as you start to meditate, you start to experience the divine. Yeah? You also start to understand that you've got to be purifying yourself physically as well. And the toxins start to leave your body. Then also, um, you will experience a little bit about the philosophy of karma and reincarnation. Once someone's gone through that for a while and understood how the system works in a way, they might even be ready then for you to tell them actually, it's all about chanting God's name and experiencing God through meditation. That is the purpose of life. Yeah? But sometimes it's very hard to take somebody because you know, people have gone and started doing Kundalini Yoga. Like in Russia, they use it in the prisons for people that are drug addicts. It's very hard to get that person to understand what they've got to do. It's quite a good intro. Yeah? Um, also, Yogaji never said this is Sikhi. He said this is Yoga. And for the people that came in for Yoga, it worked for them. Some of those guys, they became more spiritual and they said, I want to do something further. Now, Yogiji, and like myself, yeah, and other people, the, the ones that realize that they are not Satguru, they don't want to be Satguru, they understand that don't submit your ego to me because I'm a flawed person. They will join you to somebody who's not flawed, somebody better than you, yeah, better than them. So who is that? The Guru. So Yogiji then said, okay, well, you guys are starting to become quite spiritual, you start to follow this quite a lot, you're quite keen on progressing. I can't take you there. You're going to have to find Guruji. So he joined them to Guru Ram Dasi. Yeah? Said, here you go. That is a perfect Guru. Yeah? 
If you give yourself to Guru Ram Das Ji, you're going to be in the right hands. If you give yourself to me, you know, anybody is fallible, you know, apart from the Guru. So, um, now, it's Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So when you look at yoga and Guru Granth Sahib Ji, again, it's not described in negative ways, but it is described as that it's not as high in terms of meditation as singing God's name. But what you've got to understand is some people don't come into yoga to find God. It's the truth, isn't it? Some people just come to get a bit of fit, yeah? to get a bit of mental peace. So if you said to them, you've got to become religious and believe in God, they're going to say, I don't want that. Because in their mind, they've already got the concept of religion and they're fed up of it. The people on the street shouting and arguing with each other, yeah? the people that are fighting with each other with guns and saying in the name of God, yeah? they've already ruined the name of religion. So out there, religion isn't well, very well regarded. So if you tell them, you've got to become religious, God is the truth, they're going to say, oh yeah, whatever. You say to them, let's find a bit of mental peace, let's meditate, you feel better. They'll think, oh yeah, I can do with some of that. I need some peace. Ultimately, it's the same thing. Ultimately, experiencing God is the only way, right, to lose, your, to, to, to feel the best you can ever feel because that is your essence. Your essence is the one. But the word God has got a bad rep. You know, and the word religion has got a bad rep. So sometimes people can't cope with that. So you've got to remember that as well. You know, and, and getting upset and annoyed with people that are doing things that are different to what we're used to. To be honest, if you went to Udasi Dera, you'd be quite surprised. They are sick, you know, they'll call themselves sick. Udasis. You might not even heard of them. If you go to Nirmala and see the Nirmala, how they live, you might be quite surprised. The people living out here in the West, they've got, they've got only a, a very limited understanding of all how wide Sikhi is in India. Sikhi is quite wide in India. Yeah? But when it comes to Devi Devte, Shiva and all, is, Guru Granth Sahib Ji is very clear. They are not the people to submit your ego to. Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji, they're both very clear. Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, these deities, they have still got ego. And if you read their stories within the Hindu Granths, you understand they still act from ego. I'll give you an example, yeah? This is a true one. Shiva got punished to many, many years of uh, coming to earth and walking the earth, wandering the earth, yeah? The reason being, uh, he was having a chat with Vishnu and he said, who is the greatest? Shiva said, I'm the greatest. Brahma goes, no, I'm the greatest. So there's ego straight away, yeah? And then, Shiva got annoyed with Brahma and cut one of his heads off. So for that, he got punished because you can't kill a Brahmin within the Hindu scriptures. Brahma is, a, is the original Brahmin. So you can't kill one without getting punished. So he had to come to earth for many, many years. And this is just one of a totally, it's, not, it's nothing biased. It's just every Hindu will say that's what happened. Yeah? So they, they were not free of ego. Another example is um, Vishnu, to, to get the Amrit, from the demons, he assumed the form of a beautiful woman called Mohini. He became a beautiful woman and he enticed the Amrit from the demons. When Shiva heard the story from Vishnu about how he'd become a beautiful woman and the demons had lost their sense and run after him and, and, and he'd taken the Amrit, he'd stolen it, um, he said, show me what you look like then. Vishnu said, no, I can't show you, you won't be able to cope. He goes, no, no, let me, let me. And so, um, so Vishnu then turned into Moini just for a little while to show him how beautiful he looked. And then Shiva lost it. He ran after her. Yeah. Um, and that, ho that all happened in front of his wife. So he lost even the sense of behavior in front of his own wife. So they, they have got ego. Yeah. And Guru Granth Sahib Ji does not give them the status of Satguru. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji is higher than Brahma, Vishnu or Mahesh. Because they haven't got ego. But let's say if somebody is an expert in martial arts, yeah? yeah. It don't make them, doesn't make them perfect. Doesn't mean you should give your ego to them. Yeah. But you could learn the martial arts from them. So Shiva had this skill of yoga. Yeah. And he's seen as a, a yogi, he's covered in blue, okay? And he used to live as a yogi. But interesting enough, as a yogi, he still had hair. You know, he had a beard as well. A lot of the times you don't see Shiva with a beard. Yeah. But the original pictures, you know, they draw him. He always had a big beard and he had a top knot. 
on, on his head. They're not the Satguru. They can't level up to somebody who is pure of ego. That's it. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji in their writing, Shabbat Zari Pashah Hindasmi, they actually make reference to um, Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. And they say, Bin har naam na baache ne pae hain. Chaudai luk chahe bas ki ne taate kahaan pale hain. Raho. Ram, Rahim, Ubar na sakhe ja kar naam rite hain. Brahma, Bisan, Suraj. Brahma, Bisan, Mahesh, Suraj. They bas kaal sabhe hain. They said that all these Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, the as, uh, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they're all going to die because they haven't become free of ego. So they, they, they're still subject to life and death. They're not immortals because they haven't freed themselves from ego.